Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat, and welcome to my show. Today, we are going to be discussing the case of the harrowing, the hair-raising, the simply horrible, the horror of Halopoth. Now, unfortunately, I cannot take credit for this name, as this beastie was labeled the horror of Halopa in newspapers at the time, which also ran this delightful little cartoon of a Bigfoot-like creature saying, just call me the abominable Sandman. So in November of 1966, yes, that same infamous November, that the creature which would soon be dubbed the Mothman was stealing the attention, the spotlight, and the front pages of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, the small town of Hollowpaw, Florida, was beset by their very own beast, the horror of Hollowpaw. First detailed in the Orlando Sentinel on November 20th in an article entitled Friendly Scared Monster Horrifies Hollowpaw, this beast was claimed to have been seen by several people. Witnesses stated that it looked like a broad-shouldered, hairy, ape-like being, which was shorter than your average Sasquatch, standing at about five feet tall. And although the papers claimed that this abominable Sandman was friendly, one Eugene Crosby may beg to differ. Only 22 years old at the time, Eugene Crosby had one of the earliest encounters of the abominable Sandman. He claimed that the creature actually raised his garage door, and when he went out to check on what the ruckus was, the being threw a large tire tube at him. So, again, friendly, not friendly, you know, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. Later that night, he claimed that a gate on the property was opened not once, not twice, but three times by the beast. Another early sighting was claimed by two deer hunters, who said that they saw a hairy bipedal creature standing about five feet tall, which resembled a great ape while they were out hunting. They shot at the creature, which left a trail of blood. However, they didn't see where it headed off to because they were busy running in the opposite direction. Later, a house on the ranch where the hunters were hunting was broken into, completely disheveled on the inside, and bloodstains were left. It was noted that during the times of these encounters, all of the dogs in the area barked constantly throughout the night. So a second article from December 5th states that an anonymous man claimed to have seen the creature three years prior. And I can't help but wonder if this is possibly the same prominent cattleman and citrus grower mentioned by Keel in The Complete Guide to Mysterious Beings, who claimed to have seen an ape-like being running across a field in the Hollowpaw area exactly three years prior to this series of events. Now, the very first thing that stands out to me about this case is that after going through so many accounts of Bigfoot-like creatures being shot and, I don't know, simply vanishing into a flash of light or disappearing right in front of someone's eyes, in this case, it's almost an outlier that the being did appear to be injured and left a trail of blood. Um, now, again, does this kind of say this is definitely some strictly material creature? Um, does that mean every single Bigfoot encounter has to be some strictly material creature? I genuinely do not believe that. You know, I think that there's room enough in this very bizarre universe for things to have both material and immaterial kind of manifestations. And even in this case, you know, there is a concept kind of forwarded by Keel that sometimes these beings may take on, you know, physical forms for a time before wandering off to wherever it is they wander off to. And in this case, it is really interesting because, you know, this does almost seem kind of like analogous to a UFO flap. It's just that in this case, it's a Bigfoot flap. You know, this creature is seen for a relatively short period of time by, you know, multiple people. And then for a couple of years or a span of years, it just isn't around. Um, now, again, could this be some sort of physical population of ape-like creatures living in Florida? Of course. I mean, there does seem to be a lot of evidence for that. Um, it kind of brings to mind the labeling of the skunk ape, um, these very kind of, you know, less humanoid, more ape-like creatures which are spotted in that area. So could it be that it is just some sort of species of creatures which maybe migrates through or comes closer to civilization and then goes back? Of course that could be it. Then again, it could also be the concept that for whatever reason, whatever this phenomenon is, just flares up and dies down. You know, and again, I guess, you know, this whole, every single sighting that people have is really up to interpretation. Um, because in this case too, you know, the case of a Bigfoot throwing a tire tube at somebody, could that be an actual physical creature acting in self-defense? You know, yes, of course it could. Also, it calls to mind though, um, the many cases of ghostly occurrences or poltergeists where the entity throws things at people. And in this case, you know, you almost have to wonder if we're simply seeing something to fill in that void, which is poltergeist phenomenon. 
you know, where usually there's some sort of invisible entity causing the disruptions. In this case, maybe the invisible entity was just filled in, you know, in some sort of manifestation or hallucinative way as this Sasquatch-like creature. It's also really interesting to me that in the case of Eugene Crosby, the gate was opened three times. You know, again, that just falls so neatly in line with poltergeist manifestations, where doors are opened or closed, um, you know, by unseen forces. It's just that in this case, the force was seen, and it was seen to be this Bigfoot-like creature. Well, if you enjoyed this episode on the harrowing hollow paw horror, please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with whatever else I might possibly have going on on my free blog on patreon.com. For today, I am Celia Edgar, signing off. Do we?